Hello and welcome back to episode 6 of the iOS pen testing series. In this episode we're going to look at the keychain exercise. The keychain is a mechanism to sync passwords and other information between all the Apple devices that you own. So this could be your iPad, your iPhone, your Mac, etc. The keychain is a mechanism that allows developers to store sensitive information such as passwords, credit card information, and any other sort of sensitive information. The keychain can be used to store a lot of information. I've seen passwords, I've seen AWS keys, I've seen certificates private keys, I've seen AWS keys, um, and lots of other sorts of information. It's common practice and actually recommended by Apple for the developers to use the keychain to store sensitive information provided by the user. So it's fairly likely to find a lot of applications out there in the wild that use the application to store sensitive information that they shouldn't actually be storing in the keychain in the keychain. Okay, so let me go through this with you and show you it in action. Let's open up the DVIA application and then navigate to local data storage and then into keychain. And then again, in the input box, just put something that's easily identifiable to you. Again, I'm gonna use Mantis test one, two, three, four, and then we click save in keychain. And then that's done. So there's two methods that we can use to extract the keychain information. The first one is objection, as always, um, and I'll go through that in a second. But the second one, which is slightly different, is using a tool called Keychain Dumper. And what that is, is it's a, is a standalone binary that you can upload to your iPad or your iDevice. And then from there, you can run it and it will extract all of the keychain information decrypted for you to see. The way that it does this is when you run the application, when you run the tool, it will ask you for your fingerprint or your or your password or whatever you use to unlock your device um, in order to extract the sensitive information out of the keychain into a plain text format that you can see. There is still some data in there that you can't see in a plain text format. Maybe it's binary data, maybe it's, it's encrypted with a third party software as well. But generally, a lot of the passwords are plain text then. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to download the binary from the GitHub page. I will put a link in the description for you. Um, and then we're going to push it up to the iPad and we're going to do it all the manual steps. But I'm going to show you how it's done just so we can cover it together. OK, so let's navigate to the Keychain Dumper website. And this is on GitHub. So all we need to do now is navigate to the releases page on the right hand side here. And then download Keychain Dumper. If we just open that, let me move over this side. So it's just a binary here, we just need to extract this. Um, yeah, that's fine for me. So if I just grab this path here. And then look for keychain dumper. There we go, we have it there, So, So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up an, FT, uh, an SFTP connection. So I'm gonna use WinSkip again, WinSCP. All I need to do is click on here and click into iPad. So I usually either put the binary in the um, the root directory that you SSH into or just the file system root directory. So I'm going to do it into the root directory that we log into over SSH. And that's in slash var slash root. And then I've already got it there, but just for the sake of uploading, I'm going to upload it again. We can overwrite it. And we can close all these down. That's fine. Okay, so now we're just going to SSH into the iPad. So that's 192.168.0.13. Sorry for the clicking on the keyboard. And then if we do an LS, we've got the keychain dumper there. Um, when, when you first download it and push it to the iPad, the chances are it won't be runnable. So you need to change the permissions on it. So if we just do that, that should be fine. Now we can just do keychain dumper. So I need to unlock the device. So now if we run it again, we get all of the passwords. Um, again, some of these are still encrypted. Um, some of them are not. So all we actually are interested in though is the ones from the DVIA app. So we're just gonna grab for them. So it does match and it says binary file standard input matches. 
Um, there's an easy way of getting around this. If you just add an A to the grep flags, it will read it for you. And there we go. However, that's not very helpful. So what I'm going to do, instead of grepping it, I'm just going to pipe it to less. Oh, I need to put my thumbprint on. There we go. And now um, all I'm going to do is search for DVIA, which may be in capitals. So there we go. All you have to do now is just look through all of the information in here and see where it is. Um, there's obviously an easy way of doing this and just searching for the thing that you put in. There we go. So that, that there's the data there. Obviously, a bit more targeted way would be using objection. So objection will filter out only the stuff that's related to the app that you're hooked into. So we'll go through that now. We'll, sh we'll I'll show you how to how to do that. Okay. So all I'm doing here is I'm hooking up objection again. There we go. Um, and all I want to do is I want to type in the single command iOS keychain dump. And there we go. There's the data from our entry. There are other options for this. So we can do smart, which will only dump the stuff that it tries to decode. Um, this is useful for say there's uh, base 64 encoded stuff in there. So it will try and decode it into something it knows if it can identify the, the encoding. There's also a JSON format that you can dump it to. So keychains.json. And then if we exit out of this, you'll find there's a keychain.json. So if you want to do anything with it, for example, you want to import it into something else or you want to manipulate it in some way, then you can do it this way. Obviously, the information that we put in there wasn't very sensitive. In my case, it was just a string that said Mantis Test 1234. However, imagine if that was your credit card information from a fast food application or something like that. Um, the results of this would have been a lot different. So an attacker could have hold of your iPad or, or an iPad that, or sorry, an iDevice that maybe is given to an employee at work and it stores their information. Um, then that iPad or that iDevice is shared around between employees, then it might be possible for them to extract previous employee data. Um, this may be passwords for applications. It may be passwords to their to their um, domain. So the, the information in there could be very sensitive. As always, if you've learned anything in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also turn on the notifications because I'll be uploading more videos every week, sometimes twice a week. Um, and yeah, have a great day. Thank you, everyone.